इफ यू आर एन आर्किटेक्चर स्टूडेंट और यू आर एन आर्किटेक्ट और यू आर एन अकेडमिशियन यू हैव टू वॉच दिस वीडियो बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द गेट एग्जाम एंड हाउ इट मे नॉट बी द मोस्ट रेलिवेंट सोल्यूशन फॉर एंट्रेंस इन टू द मास्टर्स प्रोग्राम ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर यू नो वी हैव टू एक्चुअली टेस्ट द डिजाइन एप्टीट्यूड ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स यू नो एंड फिगर आउट वॉट दे हैव लर्न इन बी आर बिकॉज द मेन सब्जेक्ट ऑफ बी आर इज डिजाइन बट इन गेट आर वी चेकिंग द अलाइड सब्जेक्ट्स और द थ्योरी सब्जेक्ट्स एंड देन गिविंग एडमिशन टू स्टूडेंट्स इन टू प्योर डिजाइन स्ट्रीम्स लाइक लैंडस्केप लाइक अर्बन डिजाइन एंड अदर्स सो इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव फॉर्मर प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ काउंसिल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर आर्किटेक्ट प्रमेंद्र राज मेहता हु इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द न्यू इनिशिएटिव विच द काउंसिल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर इन टू थाउजेंड थ्री फोर हैड यू नो कम आउट विथ दिस वॉज आर्क प्लानट a new exam specially for architecture students who have completed bachelor's of architecture and who want to take admission into master of architecture this is going to be a new revolution this is going to be the new way of judging and giving admission and giving entrance to students into the masters program so watch this video till the end and if you have not subscribed to this channel you have to subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon so watch on hello all today we are having a very important discussion because we are all architects or architecture students or aspirants who want to become architects and you know we all have to clear this step you know clear a entrance exam clear an aptitude test but that's not all once you become an architect and if you want to do masters you have to clear another exam and that entrance exam currently is called gate but you know what happens is that you know in the discussion today we're going to discuss what are the issues with gate and you know how can it be you know the how can there be a breakthrough in gate and how can architectural entrances for masters you know be taken to the next level and for that we have no other than the former president of council of architecture with us we have with us architect p r mehta welcome sir today thank you thank you raja yeah so you know mehta sir has extensive experience you know multi decade experience as a practicing architect and he's also been a visiting faculty visiting professor at the school of planning and architecture new delhi but he was a former president of the council of architecture and he was also member of the gate committee but that's not all you know he has extensive career extensive work that he has done and his whole bio is available in the description below but sir today you know i am very keen on knowing you know you once mentioned that you know this gate exam and you know there were some initiatives that you had taken so first of all sir you know i want to ask about general aptitude exams and entrance exams so what is the difference between the aptitude of architectural entrance as such and aptitude for entrances in other domains sir if you could answer this uh raja uh, the question is very interesting uh, but uh, let me first of all say aptitude test is distinctly different than an entrance exam. you see every exam or every barrier created for a student to join a particular program i uh, can either be a, an aptitude test depending upon the education he wishes to acquire or is simply an entrance exam which is historically happening primarily the distinction between two has been that uh, usually in an entrance exam um, like you have je or ai triple e uh, all these are based on the education you have already had let's say if you are joining a engineering program so they would put questions uh, before you which are from your 10 plus 2 program right so something which you have known and what one feels is that you are coming from uh, different different boards of different different states so there could be a common entrance exam uh, which would level you up in terms of your knowledge acquired and then a merit is drawn so that's simply an entrance exam then there is an aptitude test 
Now, historically, this aptitude test has been there for admission to the arts program. You see, where in the undergraduate scheme. Uh, and here, the intention was to know that whether a student has a inclination towards creativity, imagination, originality, analytical uh, power, and so on. So a test is designed uh, to check all this and not what you have already studied in 10 plus two. So one would like to know for a student who is joining a creative program, whether he has an aptitude for that or not. And then a merit is drawn and then you are taken. So this is uh, the scenario which exists even today uh, for uh, admissions to architecture and also for uh, some BDES uh, programs at different places. When it comes to uh, PG program in uh, engineering and architecture, uh, government many, many years ago initiated what is known as GATE. So full form of GATE is Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering. It was and is meant to check or test uh, the aptitude of a student for a particular PG program he intends to enter. But as it has happened over the years, that it has actually become an entrance exam uh, that it tests uh, what you had studied at your uh, undergraduate le level in, uh, if it is engineering, me mechanical, civil, electrical, or whatever you have studied. So the syllabus for uh, gate examination, if you are uh, willing to take or intend to take uh, a PG program in electrical engineering, you, you have to, passed through an exam of electrical engineering. And um, that is how it has been. So though it is known as an aptitude test, meant to be an aptitude test, but it has simply become an entrance exam over the years. Right. Uh, for architecture students also, uh, who uh, wanted to enter into PG programs, um, some syllabus has been drawn, uh, gate, uh, committee comprises of uh, directors of uh, IITs and they by rotation, they conduct um, uh, this exam. So some syllabus has been drawn in uh, architecture and planning or mixed uh, kind of a thing. Um, and you have to appear for that irrespective of the fact that uh, we have very diverse kind of uh, PG programs and very specialized one. It could be landscape architecture, it could be urban design, it could be conservation, it could be product design and uh, so on. So uh, it is an entrance exam, very peculiar, uh, one with a very short syllabus of what could be tested because you see architectural program is largely design focused. So even if I have to compare it with electrical engineering or mechanical or civil, you see they, they appear in exam what they have studied, but here what we have studied is design, but we appear in uh, allied papers. You see, allied subjects uh, which were there uh, to be applied in design and not design. So that has been the kind of uh, scenario. Uh, yet another importance of GATE has been apart from uh, drawing up merit for admission in uh, PG programs was uh, that government would grant scholarships to uh, someone who passes the GATE exam. So that's yet another importance uh, of this gate, and that is why um, though some institutions do not draw up their uh, complete merit list on the basis of uh, gate score, uh, but uh, it becomes uh, a requirement for uh, getting scholarship. So, sir, thank you for you know telling us about you know the background of aptitude test and you know entrance exams. But what you just mentioned about gate, do you think it does justice? You know, justice to all the students who, you know, uh, have studied design and, you know, who want to get admission into masters. And what do you think about this? Uh, see, it is not an appropriate uh, test as far as uh, students of architecture seeking admission in PG is concerned. And a very simple uh, parallel you can draw from SEED, um, which is a, a, another exam as GATE. Uh, which is for PG admission into design program, MDES program. So, uh, and this was noticed uh, almost 20 years ago. It was not uh, something 
uh, that uh, we are trying to examine whether it is relevant or appropriate. Uh, I, I should uh, use that expression uh, for PG program uh, for, uh, for architects. So with this issue had come up uh, during eight meet meetings. I happened to be a member then almost 20 years ago. And uh, uh, this issue was brought before uh, the entire forum. Uh, usually the gate committee was composed of uh, uh, four to five uh, directors of uh, IITs by rotation. And I was there and Professor Pokate uh, from pharmacy background, uh, we were there. And this issue was raised that uh, this is not an appropriate uh, for uh, the students because it is neither uh, an entrance exam uh, of what you have studied nor it is an aptitude test either. Um, and it was presented before the committee and the committee agreed that uh, uh, maybe a more uh, thought needs to be put into this and a relevant uh, exam needs to be uh, prepared, uh, be it aptitude test or entrance exam, whatever it may be, but it must be relevant. It must be appropriate. And um, uh, the talented students uh, um, of uh, who aspire to do post-graduation in architecture, and they, they, they should get a chance. So that was it. So, so, you know, what will be the crucial changes that are required in the format and the contents of such an exam so that with actually testing the skills of, you know, BI graduates who want to do an M -Mark, sir. So, and one more thing as a continuation to this question, do we actually need to tweak the gate exam or do we need a new thing altogether? Uh, okay, very interesting uh, point here based. The, this issue, as I said, came up before the gate committee um, and they formed a committee uh, under uh, the chairmanship of uh, Professor Siroi, uh, then uh, director of IIT Delhi, to look into this. And uh, I happened to be a member of that committee. And um, the Council of Architecture was asked to come out with a proposal uh, as to what needs to be done. So what council did at that time was that keeping in view the different PG programs uh, we have uh, for architects, um, which as I said, MRCH uh, or uh, urban design or conservation or landscape architecture, building engineering, whatever courses which are being offered at, uh, let us say, SPA uh, and uh, some of the prestigious institutions uh, outside Delhi, like IITs or uh, JJ College, Anna University. So we looked at uh, all those uh, programs and we formulated, <coughs> excuse me, a, a complete syllabus for each of these. You see, what we focused at was aptitude test. We said no entrance exam. If somebody wants to join town planning and within town planning, if he wants to do a specialization. Uh, so whether he has aptitude for that kind of uh, uh, program or not. So if it was a landscape, we thought, uh, how does he respond to nature? What is his thinking about ecology? What is his aptitude about uh, understanding of environment? And uh, how does it reflect onto that? And similarly for urban design, how, how does a student respond to urban issues? So like that, we framed a syllabus for each of the PG program because they are distinctly different from one another. <coughs> and many a times, uh, though we call them a specialization in architecture, these are further studies uh, with the, uh, you can say introduction of uh, maybe some new subjects. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, Council of Architecture prepared that, presented it before uh, the Sirai committee so the committee approved it. And thereafter it was uh, presented before gate committee. And way back in 2003, 2004, the entire exam, you see what was the gate committee took a position that, <coughs> okay, let it be a third exam. So there's a gate exam, there's a seed exam. Let there be yet another exam, which is relevant for uh, some courses. So it was named as the uh, arch planet at that time. And it was uh, expected to be a th third program uh, for architects or a third uh, program um, uh, for admission to PGs. And it would, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. 
Don't worry so about it. It was yeah. expected that uh, yeah that uh, there could be three exam and a student would have option uh, depending upon the courses he wishes to aspire to study. He could take up that exam and um, he would be offered a scholarship and admissions based on the merit or the score he, he gets into this. Now, yep. this was to be introduced in 2005. Um, I must tell you that the GATE committee is uh, constituted by uh, Government of India, Ministry of HRD. So it, it had that kind of uh, responsibility uh, to uh, respond to uh, the expectation, aspirations, and the peculiarities of the subject. And um, that is how it was. So uh, these subjects being very diverse and uh, the aptitude required for each of these uh, is very different. Uh, I would uh, recommend that we should have uh, this exam uh, introduced as soon as it is possible so that um, the talented students, they do not miss an opportunity. You see, they are appearing in an exam which is unconnected with their likely studies or also unconnected with what they have studied at PR. Right. So it is completely a different uh, kind of a test, absolutely irrelevant. And uh, the talented students, they miss an opportunity uh, to get admission in the expected or their intended uh, PG program. And in, in case they are able to get admission by way of other tests, which some of the institutions take, they are deprived of scholarships. So um, this is not correct, absolutely not fair um, uh, in a system uh, where um, we need to ensure one is fairness, impartiality, and um, uh, relevance, absolutely. So it's very, very important that we get this introduced as, as quickly as we can. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, if this ARC planet, this is a great idea, and so thank you so much for bringing out this initiative. If this ARC planet is brought to life, how will it be conducted? Will there be a need to, you know, be an overhaul in the evaluation because, you know, GATE is MCQ based, but, you know, design exams like uh, AIEEE or the ARC planet, you know, there would be a lot of subjectivity, you know, people will have to see the designs and then check. So, I mean, that's how will, you know, the testing agency adjust to it? How will the set pattern of a GATE MCQ, they will adjust to it because that's all automatic OCR based. See, it is not very difficult. If the objective is very clear, I mean, the answers will come. You see, there could be some questions which could be multiple choice questions and MCQs. Uh, there could be um, a, a kind of a test which could be subjective in writing, maybe not necessarily drawing. And the third could be uh, maybe drawing. So let us say that you have all these three. So what is the difficulty? The difficulty uh, generally believed and imagine, in my opinion, is that uh, on a subjective matter, uh, you may not be fair to somebody. You, know, you may either give him higher marks or you may give him lower marks. Why? Why do you think like this? You, you see, uh, we must have faith in our examiners. We must have uh, trust in uh, the objective. And uh, you can't be doing what you can do. Actually, you should be doing what you ought to be doing. Yes. See, see this, this clarity should be there. And what do we want to test? We should be testing that. Not that we, we will test only what we can test. So right. that's not correct. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, incidentally, AI AIEEE was also introduced almost the same time. You see, almost 20 years ago. So <clears throat> this issue came up there also because uh, CBSC was interested by Ministry of HRD uh, to conduct uh, the aptitude test in architecture. Now, incidentally, uh, Council of Architecture guidelines are there for, not for conduct of the exam, but the content of the syllabus. So that is there and it becomes part of, uh, let's say a statutory requirement uh, with the provisions of the regulations in education. So uh, this uh, question came up then also uh, by CBSC that, how do we do that? It is subjective and so on. So the uh, Council of Architecture devised a scheme and uh, offered it to them that, okay, uh, let us say it's an exam uh, to test somebody's sketching uh, skill on that. So how do we judge? 
So we said, okay, we will have two examiners for each of the answer sheets looking independently. And in case of a wide gap, there would be an empire. So the scheme was that there would be two examiners and one empire for each of the answer sheets. They said it would be cumbersome. I said, again, you are only talking in terms of what difficulties you would have. But what we want is that whether a student is creative or not. So whatever be our difficulty in examining it, let us face that, let us involve ourselves in that. And uh, what we have to ensure is fairness. You see, that's our objective as an examiner, that uh, somebody does not get uh, unduly more marks or less marks. So there will be two examiners, one empire, and the examination is being conducted or was conducted for many, many years on that pattern and nothing went wrong. So uh, the examining authority, uh, examining body needs to be absolutely clear as to what they ought to be examining, right. what they need to. And then they have to divide a mechanism which is fair and impartial. That's right. about all. So if the, that is the challenge which is identified, so I think uh, half the battle is won. That if, if somebody knows that, okay, this is the challenge I have. Okay work around it and you have vast experience of uh, dealing with such situations. And uh, a creative field is, is a creative field. So, so uh, the examiner also needs to be a little more, or the authority needs to be more creative right. and uh, work around. But that's not a problem at all. I, I don't see that as a problem because a school of architecture faces this every day. You see, you have a class of 40 students, you have a common problem. Each one responds differently. Uh, it, he has a different kind of a focus, different tilt, different kind of a priority, different weightage to a particular issue. And he responds. And many of them get almost equal marks. So, and that is why we say we have a jury. We don't have an examiner. So you have a set of uh, maybe more than two people examining a, a design. Or, so we, we call it a jury that they may have a difference of opinion, but then they, uh, by discussion, they arrive at something common and uh, they rate uh, the output of a student. So uh, schools of architecture have great experience in dealing with these situations. So this cannot be taken as a problem or um, a, a kind of an excuse for not conducting um, tests which are required to be done. Absolutely. And, you know, we have great precedents because we... Council of Architecture already conducts NATA twice a year and the AIEEE, which was earlier, now it's you know IIT JEE mains. It is totally yeah. based on the kind of proposal Arc Planet had. So I don't think it should be any problem as you've already mentioned, yeah. sir. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, talking about other exams, you know, I want to point out that the civil services mains exam, you know, to become IAS officers, IPS officers, has a provision for selecting many subjects. And you know, most professional subjects like law, medicine, management, and you know, they have a mains exam for that subject. But architecture is absent from that list. Is it due to this design-based uh, so-called handicap that they might think they have, you know, in testing, or can Arc Planet or something like that be a solution or an answer to actually testing design skills of architect? Uh, Rajal, first of all, let me entirely agree with you that why there is no paper in the main exam on architecture. It should be there. You see, that's, that's number one, because uh, this is not a new program. This is not a new education. So it has been historically there. Uh, the only um, hesitation could have been that uh, uh, that the kind of exam they have for all other subjects, whether that exam is valid here or not. So sure, it is not valid. So you need to devise an exam uh, for what somebody has studied because otherwise in civil services exam, you are completely negating a, a particular study, which is a five-year program. Uh, as, as a subject of study for uh, the citizens of this country. So it's not correct that, uh, we, that they have not introduced this for over the years. It is absolutely um, required that uh, in case the, it needs to be pursued there, I think it is absolutely necessary that an examination on architecture, maybe not one paper, two papers, because you see, if you think that uh, that's the kind of uh, the wide spectrum it has, so um, 
you decide that what out of architecture or architecture one word and maybe one subject you need to have that naturally absolutely absolutely so so you know uh, you have a lot of experience working with the government and working with architecture colleges as you were the former president of the council of architecture i want to ask you what is the kind of push that will be required the effort that will be required you know to actually make this arc planet a reality this whole framework a reality for all the master examinations so that justice is done with all the bia graduates and they can you know be tested on their skill to go into the masters see first of all uh... I think some initiation has to be taken by Council of Architecture because this is something which was approved, which was understood by all concerned, all stakeholders, and uh, it is a revival of uh, that kind of a decision. So uh, that is the first step. Uh, the second step, uh, naturally, if um, institutions they think that uh, um, they produce their graduates, uh, they are not getting a a fair uh, treatment um, because of a particular exam i think they also need to bring it to the notice of ministry of hrd but in my opinion uh, a simple initiation by council of architecture should be good enough right because uh, the uh, see they are um, it is a body uh, which has a direct connect with ministry of hrd it is a body which uh, has an interface with the stakeholders be it students be it institutions and it is a body which is seized of this matter so you need nobody else uh, but council of architecture to uh, revive this uh, issue and uh, make it maybe um, review it and make it relevant maybe contemporary and in case there something needs to be added or deleted out of what was done at that time because you see you can't carry forward a document which is prepared uh, 20 years ago but the decision is there and you see the syllabus may change or whatever those things modalities can change method of examination can be different uh, depending upon uh, the kind of technology we have or uh, the mechanisms we may be able to develop now uh, but uh, the need is already established so i think council of architecture uh, alone if they take an they take an initiative it is done in my opinion i don't think there would be bottleneck like, because it is not replacing anything it is in addition to the two existing exams so this would be a third exam so whatever is happening will continue to happen a student would have an option if he still wishes to appear in a gate exam he is free to do that if he wishes to appear in seed exam but, but with seed you have a limited opening that you can only enter into mdes program this 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 similarly if arts planet is introduced it will lead you to say x number of uh, program and uh, that's about all so why not i i think it's a, it to my mind it is not a difficult uh, issue it is an issue which requires only little persuasion maybe revival maybe re rethinking may, maybe talking to some people uh, at git committee because i don't think even government of india uh, would have anything to say because they have left the the whole entire scheme of this exam with the gate committee which is empowered committee so but in case there is some interactions required by the with the government why not have that take everybody on board because the issue of students and their future which is it is nothing else other than that except that that somebody aspires to study a particular subject um, he should Uh, only face barriers which are uh, fair you see it, it's like a barrier you see you need to enter into a new arena so the so barrier should be fair and uh, examination should be impartial that's about all so if it is not so then it is duty of all concerned uh, to get this correction done absolutely absolutely so you know you Uh, encouraged anybody who's listening to this video that you know this should be done but you also spoke about bottlenecks you know anybody implementing this new kind of a design entrance or a architecture arc planet framework they will face a lot of challenges and you know what will be the points of care that they should take in their mind when they are going forward with implementation of arc planet i would really request you if you could tell you know us about this so that you know we are prepared anybody listening to this is prepared and they take it 
they spearhead right through and get this approved see uh, it is very interesting you see iits have been conducting beat exam so in terms of conduct of exam uh, the implementation part the operation part is so well understood and they they, they implemented uh, by rotation so almost all the iits say that the, the premier ones um, they have that experience their faculty has that experience their organization has that experience so i think that's not a bottleneck implementing it uh, and uh, is that is not proper now preparing a syllabus i think council of architecture is very competent and uh, they can do that um, they, they give uh, approvals they, they inspect pg programs they have a pool of uh, subject specialists uh, uh, which are available to them uh, from almost all the disciplines so they have experts so that is also not a bottleneck and uh, then it is a question of um, syllabus and exam syllabus if your objective is very clear that it is an aptitude test then it's not very very difficult if your objective is no no it's an entrance exam so if your objective is clear making a syllabus i think it's a everyday job for uh, the teachers or the academic council or whoever is doing it they they understand it very well so if the intent of a program is known the content can be prepared so if the purpose of examination is well understood or well stated it is not difficult to to prepare a syllabus around that then it is a question of uh, preparing a question paper and evaluating a question paper so i am sure uh, when subject specialists are there they know how to frame questions to understand with the aptitude of a student and they also know how to evaluate it because almost each one of them each institution has been doing it you see they have been choosing students for themselves sometimes through a git score flat git score sometimes a git score plus maybe a sop or maybe an interview or or whatever or an written exam so almost all of them all institutions which offer pg program they have uh, their own mechanism so now the idea is that uh, can we have a central uh, exam of that kind and uh, i don't think it is difficult at all it is they they know it i i don't think anybody needs to tell our our senior teachers and subject experts as uh, what needs to be done uh, i i think they are very, very competent and uh, um, once the, the overall framework is prepared i don't think it's an issue at all so so yeah absolutely sir you know what i want to really really get into the imagination if i am like reading this question paper for art planet what kind of questions will be there you know just to you know paint just to give a perspective to the listener what are the questions that will be asked what are the framework what are the parts of this exam can you just like tell us and you know put the spark into our imagination see as i said that if it is an new test and let us say uh, the subject is architecture or masters in architecture and then what do you want to see do you want to test his creativity again once again which was tested uh, before he entered the brs program so my answer would be no so that's not something which you need to do what do you want to check yeah what do you want to understand so so you want to understand his own aspirations you see what does he want to do what is student is looking forward from a program and that program can can there be a question to understand his aptitude for that so as i said for landscape maybe his understanding of nature you see how sensitive is he uh, to that or whether he has some idea of uh, if there is a challenge uh, for an environment or before mother nature then you know, how would he respond oh, so so these kind of things you see that is a syllabus based issue that what exactly you want to test you, you see you can't be asking him questions that who is the greatest landscape architect or you see that's not the point see, that has nothing to do with your aptitude the aptitude right. and as these two together you have to put so uh, if it's a conservation program then you you want to test well, what is his interest in history let's say right. political history method of building construction what is his interest so you can check that with the appropriate questions and uh, you, you can relatively grade them but uh, 
see, you can't have an entrance exam based on a syllabus of the previous examination and then repeat it and put a, a question paper for what all you have studied in five years. So what's the point? So aptitude tests have to be very, very focused, very objective and uh, very pointed. You see, they must give you an indication that whether the student has a spark or not. You, you see, that is what you, you're looking at, at whether uh, uh, his interest in the subject uh, is uh, to a level that uh, it, it will become his uh, passion to pursue this or not. So, so you, you have to understand that, that whether this personality, this student's personality uh, is, is uh, can it be channelized into this subject so that ultimately, uh, you see the end objective is that uh, a society needs to be served by him. So, so we need only students doing postgraduate programs who have interest in a subject and who will be at the end of the day will be able to contribute uh, in the development of society and improvement of human habitat. So that is the sole purpose of a society to uh, introduce educational programs so that they are served with people who would have knowledge and experience, uh, in-depth understanding of a particular subject. So we must get the right people um, doing postgraduate studies and not anybody or everybody. So aptitude test is very, very vital, very, very vital, uh, particularly in creative fields where there is a large amount of discretion. You see, it is not uh, two plus two, four. You see, you, you, you keep on giving different weightages uh, to uh, multiple inputs and uh, something unknown, which you are visualizing it for future. And you, you give that a weightage and then you design and then you get an answer uh, which may be converted into a physical form uh, at a given time. So it's a great amount of uh, discretion and responsibility. So we must get the right students in PG program and uh, there could be no other better thing than having an aptitude test uh, for uh, a particular program for each of the students. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, my real hats off to you that, you know, more than a decade back, you thought about this and you got this decision made. And, you know, this is up to uh, us, the, the future, to take this forward and, you know, make sure that we have a proper exam for ourselves. And, you know, it's very important to also know that, you know, when I was giving gate, I wish that the questions could be a little more relevant to what I had studied and what I'm applying for. So, you know, really, really thank you for that. So, you know, uh, we've covered a lot today, sir, you know, like we've covered the basis of aptitude exams. What is the difference between aptitude and entrance and how architectural entrance exams work, how the gate uh, committee had, you know, decided on a new kind of a framework for architecture students. And you, you just, you spoke about how this exam would be and how it will be conducted. What will be the bottlenecks? What will be the breakthroughs? What will be the way forward? So, you know, that was a lot of information and thank you so much. You know, I would request if you could, you know, conclude this very important discussion we had today with a message for the viewers. See, the first message I would have for uh, the authorities which regulate architectural education and which impart architectural education. I think they ought to be becoming very sensitive of their responsibility. As I said that uh, here with this kind of a new aptitude exam, we are not only likely to help the students, but our larger goal is to help the society. You see that they be, the society be served by those who are expert in subject and who are meant to deal with a particular subject in terms of their aptitude. So my message for regulators and the institutions which impart education, that whenever they see something like this, that which is not serving our larger objective, which is not serving the immediate objective of any students, I think they must seek correction. And seeking correction is not only pointing out to somebody that what is wrong, they must come out with a solution that, okay, this is the answer to a problem right. which we have identified. So they have to serve both ends. So when this impart education, their stakeholder is not only the student, it is the public at large is also a stakeholder. Maybe it is a silent stakeholder, 
maybe that the stakeholder through the the legislation and parliament have entrusted that responsibility the knowledgeable responsibility to the institution you see why public is silent because they think that institution which impart architectural education understand our aspiration and they will deal with that aspiration and they will they are not at a job of just teaching they they are teaching with an objective a societal objective so and similarly for a regulator that if a regulator is framing a, a particular framework he needs to frame it in the interest of public first that what is aspired by public what public deserves to get that they must first register in their mind and convert it into some kind of a law or regulation or a guideline whatever it may be and then pursue it with the institutions who are interested with responsibility of imparting education so i think my message is for them that please remember your responsibility your larger responsibility and act do not remain silent when you see that something is not appropriate or something is required change they need to act they need to initiate an action that is number one the similar message i have for the students that if they think that they are not getting a fair deal in it like in this exam gate exam i think they need to convey it to the concerned authorities which could be their own institution which could be uh, the examining agency of a particular exam or the regulator of the education so they also have some amount of responsibility they they should not take that maybe is the first and last time i am appearing in this exam now i have nothing to do with this this is only meant for my scholarship or admission it's all over no that's not enough as a responsible student who is already a graduate is already a professional who is already um, has the credential to 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 serve a society i think he should not forget that if he sees something wrong some unfair deal somewhere he must bring it at least to the notice of those who are concerned with it or those who are responsible for controlling that so that's about all for today thank you thank you so much and you know i personally inspired right now you know to write a letter or you know convey that you know this exam could needs a little bit of a overhaul so that it actually tests my aptitude as an architect and you know gives me the right platform and the opportunity for my future and for the public good in general so i'm we are so glad to have you and you know you gave so much wisdom today thank you so much sir thank you raja thanks thank you thank you Thank you.